Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone. So, yep, yeah, I'm Dave Goodhand. I am a solutions engineer here at Unravel Data. Um, I can talk to you about how Unravel can help kind of tune, optimize those Spark workloads um, and data pipelines. So, why Unravel? Pretty much, maybe who is Unravel? Um, we are a group of professionals coming from Duke University, also Cloudera and Hortonworks um, with App Dynamics, uh, and also to date, we have tuned and kind of looked over kind of over 50 million applications with kind of 15,000 plus um, kind of recommendations and nodes that we've been supporting through those um, big data platforms um, across many verticals um, and some kind of like of our tier one investors here as well. Uh, but our solution, we help um, <clears throat> manage the performance of your data pipelines, resource and optimization across uh, your big data platform, whether that's kind of CDP, maybe HDP, um, Azure Databricks, HDI as well, um, with Google Cloud coming later. Um, we help kind of from a resource and cost optimization. So once you actually optimize your code and those pipelines that are running within your environment, uh, you can actually get higher throughput through your through your solution and therefore kind of increase the, the throughput of a maximum jobs that you can run um, if it's on cloud from a cost perspective, but on an on-prem, you kind of want to optimize the workflow so you can actually use your hardware kind of more effectively and efficiently. And then we help with kind of cloud migration. If you're moving workloads to the cloud, how much will it cost? Is it going to be optimized? Maybe it's going to cost too much, maybe more cost effective to run it from on-prem to in cloud. Um, how do we do that? Well, like I said, we just kind of we're unified full stack uh, with any cloud platform. Um, we have kind of machine learning and AI powered recommendations through our recommendation engine. And we have automated tuning, so you can put safeguards for your cluster in place as well to make sure no one user can kind of take that out. Um, so if we look at, here are some of the clients that we currently work with um, across many different verticals. Um, you'll probably recognize some of the names on it. But how do we really manage these kind of distributed applications um, effectively to date? So if you're not using Unravel, it is fairly kind of confusing, very difficult to get all the information you need to why did an application fail, or maybe why is it slow? And we've all been there where you trawl through logs and you're looking through everything. It takes very long periods of time to get all the data that you need. And then we help by kind of combining all of that data. So as I said, you know, there's many reasons why applications fail, applications are slow. You know, maybe you have bad code, maybe the container sizing is incorrect maybe the join or the underlying data structure itself is not really efficient. So the current way, as I said, you know, millions of log, well, thousands of log files to dig through from your executor, your driver, memory. Maybe you have third-party software that's pulling those metrics and you're looking at it, but it doesn't really give you the insight into the application itself, where it's more looking at, okay, at what kind of memory is being used on the cluster itself? Is the cluster, you know, optimized? Is it working correctly? But nothing on the application side. So Unravel helps you kind of understand really where those applications and what they're doing. Um, also the usage within your cluster, be it on the cloud or on-premise. Most people, if you look at them today and you say, hey, how is your cluster actually performing now? Um, a lot of people will struggle to give you that information immediately. They'll be able to find it out, but you have to jump through many UIs. You have to kind of go through various logs. You have to look at the underlying structure, et cetera. So we help kind of unify all of that in one place. Um, we help troubleshoot with like root cause analysis as well. Um, but also the main real um, interesting piece that we have is from the application and um, the kind of recommendation engine that we have. So if we look a little bit at the infrastructure that we have, we, we sit on a node within your uh, big data platform, be that in Azure, AWS, uh, be that on-premise. So from, a, from an Unravel standpoint, <coughs> excuse me, we don't, uh, we don't collect any data. All the data is yourself. Um, it runs within your environment, so nothing gets pushed out into somewhere that you don't control. Um, but we sit on a node. We deploy one jar into the job JVMs, and then that sends all of the data that we need to make those recommendations and uh, collect those metrics. So for Unravel for Spark, from an application side, 
We have insights and recommendations, like I was saying, so we collect all of the data of how those jobs are run, put them through the recommendation engine. As those jobs run for a longer period of time, we can provide better recommendations for those configurations, uh, for those workloads. Um, from kind of, we visualize the job run, so you can actually see how long or short each kind of task is taking. As I kind of said, kind of root cause analysis. But also from an operation standpoint, you can view all of your Databricks work, workspaces in one place, be that multiple cluster, maybe EMR as well. Um, so you'll be able to actually just log in from an operation side to see how is the cluster performing at this moment in time, what kind of jobs are running, and you can drill down into kind of like finite detail as to kind of see how everything is going. Um, you can also see from a usage trending, but we'll kind of go into that a little bit later. Um, charge back as well. So if you're looking on multiple tenants across your cluster, you can see which tenants are using it and kind of build them accordingly. Um, you can also see from um, usage trending, etc., whether or not those workflows are getting slower or being more efficient, maybe they need more tuning. Um, so if we look at uh, <clears throat> kind of like, uh, I was going to do a live demo, but I didn't know if the Wi-Fi was going to be right. So we have some screenshots, but I was going to say for a live demo, you know, come to the booth and I'll happily take you through any kind of questions or anything you've got. So we're looking from an operational point of view first, and then we'll move into the applications afterwards. So from the operation side here, you can see across all of your Databricks instances, how they're performing. You can slice and dice with by user or by workspace, and you can kind of click into any peaks and troughs that may you know, be happening at that moment in time. So <clears throat> for here, you can see that there's a peak. We're interested to go, okay, what's actually been running at that moment in time, and then you at the bottom you'll see the running or what was running at that moment in time. So you can see, okay, maybe was it a rogue job? Was that meant to be running? Was that meant to be taking this much memory or CPU? Um, you can then go into your usage trending for in your uh, workspaces. So you can then determine, okay, maybe I need to monitor or maybe I need to move some of these workflows that are running on a higher day and maybe move them somewhere that's lower, then keep the SLA that was actually working um, correctly so you don't actually miss it. Um, okay, yeah, here we go. <laughs> so yeah, again, workspace, you can drill down workspace, user, etc. cetera. <clears throat> uh, but it gives you that visualization as to how those workspaces are performing. Um, if you're looking from a user, you can actually already immediately highlight, okay, this user is actually using more than he should do. Maybe I need to go and talk to them. Maybe you've got different kind of teams or different business units, which are also submitting jobs to those workspaces. Here will give you a good indication as to how many jobs are they running? Should they be running on this workflow? Um, but you will also be able to see, okay, well, maybe, you know, this department maybe needs their own cluster potentially, but it gives you that visualization, which is kind of missing today. So from there, yep, you can see through this. Um, <clears throat> so also your data usage. So we will actually flag your tables which are being touched, when they were created, when they were last modified, what kind of data set is underlying. Um, maybe we can move these to from a hot storage to kind of like a colder storage, maybe something cheaper. Um, or maybe there's some tables that shouldn't even be there in the first place. I mean, a lot of us, or at least a lot of companies that I've worked with, um, generically don't have the visibility into their data or what, you know, what should be being used and what not. And if this data is sitting there on a cluster somewhere, it's potentially costing you money. And then you can actually look in immediately and say, hey, look, this shouldn't be here. Let's take that away and potentially get those cost savings or move all of those high impact tables that you've been kind of connected to to try and then move those to warmer storage or kind of maybe SSD so then at least you have that data fully available. So yeah, again, you can see, you can drill in, you can pretty much click through any of these um, UIs that go down into what job was touching which table, which workspace was touching which table, etc., and then slice and dice by users again. So you can see here, <clears throat> you get like the full visibility. So from a day-to-day -day point of view, like is there any spikes, is there not? You can, you can pretty much drill in. Um, from here, you can see the applications which are running and uh, you can see the spanner icon, 
which means that Unravel is detected that this job does need some more tuning. So that's where our engine has actually flagged some optimizations that need to be kind of configured or at least enabled. Um, we can also have Unravel that will automatically deploy those configurations if you request and then resubmit the job to the cluster using the uh, configured recommendations. Um, so yeah, you, from here, yeah, so as I was saying, you can kind of see the table um, heat map. So if you're interested in your batch workloads, which are kind of SLA bound, which uh, where's my hotspots within that workspace and the cluster. And from there, you can kind of drill in to say, okay, right, this is a super important SLA. Let's make sure that we move it to a time where nothing else potentially is running. Or maybe we've got a slow query, but it's running within one of our hotspots within our cluster itself. So if we look at it from an application point of view, which is more interesting than kind of operations, because this is where that we provide kind of the recommendations within the job and within the configuration memory um, through anything towards kind of data skew or um, partitioning, incorrect usage of partitioning, et cetera. So from here, we're interested in this application run. So you can see that, okay, <clears throat> we can easily see you know, how many runs from a duration point of view, was it faster or slower? And how you, from here, you can also kind of drill down into kind of GC time, uh, memory or CPU time, and then determine what is actually happening within that job at any kind of given moment in time. So you could here see um, the timeline and drill down into, like I said, uh, from a time scale perspective, and even the execution program of that DAG. So you can also look at from a root cause analysis as to, okay, why did my job fail? Um, <clears throat> you can click in unraveled recommendations here, so you can see that uh, it failed with uh, out of memory. We give you all of the errors and the logs in one place. And from there, you can pretty much determine, okay, easily see why that job failed as opposed to kind of pretty much having to go into your Databricks cluster, getting the cluster ID, going and finding the logs. Um, because this is how you would have to do it almost before having Unravel. <clears throat> and then you would also have to kind of move those logs from DBFS then to your local workstation, trying to trawl through, use any kind of scripts that you may have put together. Whereas actually in Unravel, we have it all there in one place. And then you can determine, okay, maybe the default parallelism needs to be increased or decreased. Uh, but a lot of times we see overcommittal of kind of driver memory. So if you bring that down, then it gives you more throughput, but it also saves you cost within the cloud once you're moving to it. So we're mainly around the job application side, whereas we always see more value. And the, if those jobs run on a batch period, if you're running them over constant, if you know that that job is actually going to be rerun more than one time, We'll give you the recommendations at the end of that run, and then you can run it again and become more efficient. We're still working on how to work with interactive clusters at the moment. So that's one thing that will be coming in a new version, but currently now it's like the job actually has to finish, has to be rerun. So for batch workloads, we're much more effective at helping. From interactive workload, we're nearly there, but uh, it will be coming in within the next release. So you can see here, you from this screen, you'll be able to like auto-tune your configuration, create a session, but you can see over the period of time what was the duration run after, after we make the recommendation. So that's it, Ooh, sorry. <clears throat> so if you see here before, obviously the recommendation, the job run time was seven minutes. After we implemented the recommendation, we get the job time down to one minute 30, and you can kind of still see what else needs to be performed. But the longer you run uh, Unravel over your jobs, then the better and more insightful those recommendations will be because of the machine learning that we have within the Unravel server itself. Um, so from an architectural point of view, we did kind of cover this a little bit earlier, um, but we, we sit within Azure VM uh, that's connected to all of your Databricks workspaces. And then kind of from there, determine which cluster, pull all of the information in one space, and then from there, provide recommendations and also any kind of uh, information across those different workspaces so you have a kind of unified single pane of glass view. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much it. Um, if you want a live demo, come to the booth. It's just on the corner. And um, that's pretty much it, really.
Great. Thanks very much, Dave. And uh, be sh uh, remember to rate uh, the talks, and you can do it from the app itself or um, online if you want. Thank you. Bingo. Perfect timing. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. No worries. Thanks. I'll take the board. Uh. Um, oh. <laughs> not really. We do. Um, we're based out of London, so uh, we have some. Yeah, it looks like it.